Hey folks, in this interview, I'm talking with John Thao. We're gonna be talking about photographing amazing aircraft. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I got a treat for you today. I'm speaking with John Thao. He's down in Southern California, and he's a photographer slash illustrator who's, who's made his mark taking amazing photographs of some amazing aircraft. And uh, I'm excited to talk to him. John, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Hey, Frederick, I'm doing great, man. It's good to see you. Thanks. Appreciate you, you know, having no, me. You, <laughs> you, you, are, you are very welcome. Um, I'm excited to dive into this because you, as you and I discussed in our pre-interview, uh, I'm an Air Force, ex-Air Force guy, you know, Air Force right. combat photojournalist, used to take pictures of these planes, haven't been in any of these planes. I The... Oh, no, I touched, no the the only aircraft that I I've flown in was a UH1N, a, you know, a Huey, right? Okay, so okay. photographers okay. used to fly around with the doors open taking pictures of rocket launches and stuff like that, but I never had the opportunity to get in a fast burner one of these guys. So, I'm well, jealous. It, 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 well, don't be totally jealous. Uh we've been around a whole lot of them, but I got to tell you post 9/11 that changed for us too. And um, um, there's there's a lot of that. So I I the majority of my flight time in uh, amazing aircraft has been really warbirds. Um, okay. We've done some stuff with the Air Force where we're in uh, KC-135, and I say and I say we that is not the royal we. <laughs> I, it's <laughs> I know we're talking about my photography, but my two sons have been a very integral part of Slick Pixels, and we've been they've been photographing with me since they were gosh published since they were about eight years old each. And so that's been uh, that's been a part of that. So when I say we, I want everybody to understand I'm talking about uh, the three of us in that respect. But yeah, with the fast uh, with the quote unquote fast air, uh, we have not had that opportunity as much as we would have liked. Uh, some civilian stuff and uh, and some some transports and some nice photo platforms. But uh, yeah, anyhow, yeah. don't be too jealous. Okay. All right. I'm still jealous, though. I mean, get to, you, know, you get to be around those aircraft and, and shoot them. How, what got you into this this sort of line of photography? What was the, the path that, you, that, that led you to the runway? That's a great question. So a as a kid, uh, my dad was a pilot, a uh, private pilot, uh, even though he had a commercial rating, as was my grandfather. And it was really my grandfather that I flew with primarily. Um, he was kind of the head electrician out at Point Magoo. And so in addition to his, um, gosh, in addition to his pilot, his love for aviation and his piloting skills, in World War II, he had flown B-17s, um, primarily stateside. Uh, so he wasn't, he was not on combat missions at that time. But anyway, at Magoo, he had, uh, one of his things was to help with the air show every year. So from about the time I was about seven years old, um, I was at, I couldn't get enough Point Magoo. So, you know, so I was out there and they brought in, wonderful Navy stuff and Air Force stuff and whatever every single year. And uh, my family would always go out one day a year. And then I talked him into taking me with him and and I'd kind of go out there with him. And he'd set it up to where uh, I was sitting with the pilots and going back and forth with uh, whether it was the Blue Angels or whoever. And he'd set me up with some vendor on the flight line that I could go get lunch. And I pretty much had to run to the place all weekend from the time of I was about eight years old. So wow. that's, that's wow. really what started it. I had a little brownie camera that had belonged to my mother that, uh, you know, there's actually in a, in a book I have coming out later this year. There's a couple of those little shots still back in those days. They used to they used to fire live sidewinders during an air show. And oh. what I wouldn't do that again today. Yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, John, how did you manage to um, avoid enlisting or, or signing up and going, going top gun. You, I, you, you look, great, you look like you could have been a top gun pilot. What happened? Well, I, I love that you say that, man. I, you know, I, <laughs> you know, um, in, in addition to my photographics, it's funny you ask. And by the way, I did go in and I talked to a recruiter on more than one occasion. Um, at the particular time I was going through, um, I know now that I got what turned out to be some bad advice. Uh, I was told that I was too tall for fighters. And uh, I know now that that was not true. I'm about six one, 
Um, mm-hmm. That's, you know, so while I had sat in a T-38 and felt a little cramped, I've got a couple of buddies who uh, do that stuff professionally that are bigger guys than I am and did just fine. So um, at the time, I think they were looking for cargo pilots. Looking back on it, I probably should have gone ahead and done that. But, uh, oh. you know, with my art career, that had started to take off a bit. And one thing leads to another, and I realized I couldn't do both. And so I've done a lot of graphic design work uh, in support of the military as well. So I've, And I've done some work as a civilian contractor that way. Um, so that's that's kind of how it ended up. You know, I don't, God had different plans. What can I tell you? But uh, it's, it's definitely the, the road not taken for me. Okay, so let's switch gears a little bit. So as you as you sort of matured as an artist, you know, and 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 cut your teeth. You normally, at least in my experience, people you know go down a path and they're like, okay, I'm going to be a photographer, or I'm going to be an illustrator, or I'm going to be a painter, or a sculptor. You have two brains. You're a you're a photographer <laughs> and an illustrator. How does that work? How right. do you balance those two things? Yeah, actually, I think that's a great question. Um, and and I, I, you know, it's so funny for me because I actually have done sculpting work. I've done illustrating work. I've, you know, we do web design. I do all kinds of these different things. For me, the photography was something I always enjoyed. And it really started out originally as reference material for my artwork. And a big part of that was because the cameras that I was shooting, um, probably on the budget I was on, on an artist's budget at the time, right? Um, yeah. part, of, part of that was, you know, I'm not as close as I want to be. Maybe the access isn't as good as you want, or, you know, especially as a kid, they were, you know, the things are distant. Um, so as that got better and the people really loved the photography as well as the artwork, then it kind of became <laughs> two things, you know? Um, yeah. The other thing that was pretty neat was, there were definitely, depending on the clients I was working with, the camera was a great road in with uh, with some squadrons or some clients or what have you. And, and the artwork was a great way in with some of our patch designs and other things that we've done for other units, uh, as well as, of course, lots of civilian companies as well. So it really became a way to, um, they, they kind of fed each other. And yeah. in addition to that, it's it's great reference material for what I'm doing. And and artistically, you know, the other thing that's really interesting, as an artist, there's a lot of uh, kind of solitude, if you will. There's a lot of times where you're just kind of at the easel or at the desk, or, or in my case, I do a lot of digital stuff now, even though I've done all of the above. And so there's a, I'm a really social guy and like to be with people and like to do all that. And so that's, that's a bit of a balance for me. Yep. The camera is terrific. The camera you know, gets me rides on airplanes that I just wouldn't get otherwise. And it gives you an experience that you can take back and put into that artwork. So for me, that's been a great balance. I highly recommend it. You kind of have to, it's like you have to live it a little bit, you know? Do you, do you, as part of your process, are you, uh, you know, primarily digital? Like, are you doing all your like illustration work in Photoshop or Illustrator or some other application? Or do you start, you know, like a traditional artist with pen and paper or paint and an easel and and that sort of thing? Interestingly enough, all of the above. So um, once upon a time, definitely all traditional, of course, because that was when I first opened my business in uh, 86. that was the medium of the day. And then as computers came in, you know, then that gave us some options. The computer thing for me originally was, uh, okay, I'll get interested. My dad and my brother were really into computers, you know, and they had the old Texas instruments and the Commodores and that kind of stuff. And they'd go, oh, John, look, you know, look at this, man, this stuff's great. And I'm going, yeah, I got no interest in that. One day when I can draw on it, we'll talk about it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Then when I could draw on it, then then I got really into it and I build my own and all kinds of stuff. But the um, yeah, I you know, tr- the bottom line, I still like to draw with a pencil and paper. And so so for me, that pencil and paper thing is is a big deal. I like to sit down, and sketch that out. And then there's times most often I probably sketch on pencil and paper and then import that into the computer and then draw from that or draw over that with the paint tools because it's faster. The other thing. The other thing that's interesting, um, when you paint on canvas or you draw on paper or any of that stuff, in order to publish that material, then you have to get that to transition to a format that'll print. So usually that happens with our cameras. Now today with with the digital cameras and the mirrorless cameras and everything being as good as they are, that transition of that artwork is much, much better than it used to be. For a lot of years, 
um, there, there's quite a quality loss between the color and the representation of that original work of art and what ends up in, say, a magazine or a book. Um, so, so the digital art, uh, what I found was, boy, doing that digitally really gave me some versatility that I don't have the same way with, you know, with some of the traditional mediums. So it's a very long answer to all of the above, Frederick. Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> yeah, what, so, what about tablets? Yeah. Because, you know, Apple with the, with the iPad and the Apple Pencil and, or yeah. a Wacom tablet with its gazillion yeah. levels so, of pressure sensitivity. Are you in that world yeah. as well? So, yeah, that's what I use 100% of the time is a Wacom tablet with, uh, with all that pressure sensitivity. So yeah. those, are, those are really good. There's, um, there's a lot of different options. We've used different ones over the years. And, uh, yeah, that, that's primary. So I'll put my sketch in there and then, and then go in and draw over that. I use Illustrator. I use Photoshop. Um, primarily with the hand-drawn stuff, I use Photoshop. Or I also like, um, uh, they used to call it Manga Studio, but now they call it um, Clip Studio Pro. And okay. that's, that's a, it's actually comic book illustration software, but it has some really good painting tools. And so I like that. So some of the, uh, oh, some of the artwork that I did with the B25 with executive suite was done that way. And there's some, some different pieces that, uh, you know, that we'll show that, that have some. So, lines. yeah, and we're going to, we're going to show some of these in the, in the B roll. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious as to what your, you've, you've done a lot of work. So I'll bring up your website here. Um, so, uh, people can take a look at what it is that you're photographing. Look at all this stuff. This is crazy. So, you know, when you're, when you're out there and just on the runway doing this stuff, it's gotta be just lightning, right? It's, like, it, it, it is adrenaline, man. I love it. So, um, there's, there's a lot happening. So in, in what you're kind of seeing here, in fact, the, the illustration on the right side of the screen there with the green B25 Mitchell, that's one of the ones I was talking about a minute ago. Um, so we, we really do kind of two primary things. So either I have um, uh, air shows that we're photographing or military exercises, or I guess the third would be um, independent. Uh, sometimes we have independent aircraft owners who want photographs or who are willing to go up and do some air to airs for a, a book or a piece that I'm doing. And then a lot of this stuff is culminating on the pages of this book I've been speaking about and, and others. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, the, um, Gosh, the so if we're not air to air, um, which I would say is actually most of the time, most of the time we're shooting from the ground or say from a control tower or something, you know, that way that's that's mm -hmm. ground based. Um, if that's the case, then, yeah, we're, we're kind of out in the middle of it. If we've got good access, then a lot of times we're out like between the runways, say at, like Nellis Air Force Base for Red Flag. Uh, we've had some opportunities to be out there, be at the control tower or, or in an aircraft or out between the runways. And then you've got these fighter jets and bombers and whatever all around you. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much like standing next to the freeway. <laughs> yeah, know, I bet. Um, I bet. Yeah, it's it's loud and it shakes and it's wonderful. You know, it's uh, there's. I find an odd sense of peace amidst the whir of propellers and the roar of jet engines. What can I, I tell love you? it. I love yeah. it. It's a lot of power out there. Have you ever, have you ever considered doing, because you're obviously an expert at, at photographing aircraft, what about like, like SpaceX launches and that sort of thing? You ever, sure, you ever you wanted know. to throw your hat in that ring? Yeah, I, you know, I, I figured that you could help me with that. You're the guy with those connections, right? The, uh, no, I know um, some people, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be totally into that, man. I'll meet you at any one of those anytime you want to go. Um, that is we've, cool. we've done a little of that stuff. Actually, I've got, uh, oh, there were some shots that we got to do at Edwards a few years ago with the space shuttle. That was really great. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of actually a neat thing for me. As a kid, we were in Florida for and watched the first launch of the space shuttle Discovery from our hotel room. And... Uh, then I was at Edwards Air Force Base and got to photograph the final landing of the last mission of Discovery at Edwards. So that was kind of a, a neat span of the career of that aircraft, that spacecraft, I guess, uh, is a better way to say that. But, um, yeah, no, the, all, you know, anything aviation, anything, I even love motorsports, any of that stuff, I, I'm into it, you know. So, no, that. that'd be a neat thing, and that's certainly another set of challenges, with, especially if it's a night launch that's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, I have a friend, a friend of mine who uh, – 
who who actually does that. And it's, uh, I'll send you a link, and I'll put a link in the the notes for this this okay. episode. But he, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's done some amazing shots, and you know, this it's got its own set of challenges, right? Because with you know, Absolutely. as as does the work that you do with with being safe on the runway and and not you know being invisible for the most part with this yeah. with these space launches. There's zero, not that there's margin for error with aircraft, but there's like no margin for error with these things and yeah. and you can't be close. So he one of the discussion points he brought up in that interview was you got to set everything up and and use remote triggers either sound based or some other, you know, way to to trigger the cameras that go off. So yeah, it's the whole right. world of that stuff is interesting. I admire no, you guys that that capture this stuff. That's fascinating. This is I mean, this is really a, a different environment for some of that, even than that. Um, and like I said, I'd love to try that in, in our situation. So much of what I'm dealing with is um, you have a you have a fast moving aircraft, be it, you know, be it a warbird or a jet or whatever. The jets are obviously faster. There's times where they're coming in, even at an air show. Now, it's funny, as a kid, they'd, they'd pop the sound barrier out here and nobody thought much of it. Um, uh, you know, at Edwards way up high in the altitude, you'll still get some of that once in a while. But other than that, uh, they're just subsonic. So they're just kissing up against 700 miles an hour. You know, as we know, the, the speed of sound fluctuates a little bit based on air density and altitude. Mm -hmm. So you, yep. you, you, know, you get them popping those vapor clouds down low and they're doing just about 700. And, you know, and you're panning with that, trying to get that thing. And so that's, that's a, a nice technique in and of itself. And then when you bring in, um, when you bring in prop planes, then of course the challenge is to get that same stability in your shot while getting some blur of the propeller. It's really yeah. easy if you want, if you're willing to freeze the propeller, and sometimes I am, <laughs> but it's, it's <laughs> not great. But yeah, uh, but if you're willing to freeze the propeller, it's pretty easy. When you want that prop blur and you're balancing, obviously the newer cameras are a lot better than you know than they've ever been. Uh, there's a lot more image stabilization. That stuff really helps because you can crank that shutter speed down. But uh, yeah. barring, what are you barring doing? That, what are you doing? What are you doing as far as gear? Like, what are, what are you shooting with to, so, to get these shots? You know, now I'm shooting the EOS R at the moment. Uh, we're excited about the R5 coming out. Not to sit here and do Canon ads, but uh, you know that's kind <laughs> of a neat, <laughs> neat, neat possibility. The um, you know it's funny. The R got a really bad rap. Uh, a lot of people got upset about what it didn't have. Um, for me, it's, it's a great camera. Um, there's the one thing that's a little weird is, especially when you're doing this high speed thing is, um, you do have a little stutter when, you know, it takes a picture and it gives you that image even in the, uh, viewfinder. So, so it's just, just for a minute, it's like that closes down. Now, a long time ago when I was shooting Indy cars and Le Mans cars and all that stuff, one of the guys that was instrumental in kind of me learning a lot of that was really adamant about always shooting with both eyes open. And hmm. so, um, so I really, I'm not a guy who sits like this at the viewfinder. I'm usually both eyes open and I'm looking at both. And so my situational awareness during that pan for me is a lot better. Um, so I, that may be part of why the camera really doesn't bother me in that respect at all. And I've had great luck with it. Um, I've only been shooting that one since about, Gosh, I don't know, middle of last year or something like that. I think we, I think the first show we shot with that camera was Huntington Beach last year. Yeah, but, that's um, interesting. But yeah, what about, and then prior what about that, 360 stuff? Have you ever have you played around with that? I was as a preparing for this interview, I was just sort of looking on YouTube at different, you know, uh, different different stuff. videos up there. Yeah, and it's like yeah. I was in the cockpit of you know a fast burner yeah. finally, and I yeah. got to experience it without the G forces. What do you, what do you think right. about that stuff? Well, number one, I love it. I think it's great. Um, there's some neat opportunities out there. I really haven't played with it. Um, I, I've done some graphic work over the years and, of course, some photography work with the Thunderbirds. And that's uh, the Thunderbirds pilots. Most of them have, uh, I think it's a Rilo camera that they have in their cockpits right now. Uh, there's a lot of really wonderful stuff on Instagram and Facebook and on their website, I'm sure, with, with some of that onboard stuff. Um, so that's that's where I've seen more of it. Um, mm -hmm. we've, we've run GoPros for years and some of those, um, you know, they're, it's, it's really funny with all this stuff. I, I had used the GoPro for a while with the, um, with the gimbal on it. Uh, that was kind of a neat little option. Um, mm -hmm. but, but as they're getting more stable and they're getting better, all of these cameras are a lot better bouncing around than they used to be. So yeah. that's helpful. Um, yeah, even the know. phones, right? With image stabilization in the phones, it's all, they're getting, it's all getting better getting every better. year. And yeah. as a result of it, we're starting to shoot uh, more video. 
you know, yeah. so, uh, yeah. you know, it's just, a, it, it's, it's interesting. Um, I was in a, I was in a conference with some other video photographers, maybe about a year and a half ago. And, uh, we were talking about some of this stuff. And as the video quality is getting so much better, and it's funny because as a still photographer, hearing what I'm about to say is a little sacrilegious, but the video quality is getting so good, you're going to be able to, and, and we're already doing it in some cases for like commercial brochures and things like that. You shoot like a 4K or an 8K video, and you can pull stills out of that that are good yes. for a lot of applications. So yeah. I know it's it's a weird. I was going to ask you about that. You're you're looking at my notes because I was going to ask that <laughs> question. <laughs> I it's, shoot yeah. Lumix. I shoot Panasonic yeah. Lumix, and my the my latest toy is the the full frame S1 from Panasonic. Okay. And okay. you know they've been talking about the whole shooting 4K. They even have a 4K photo mode on the cameras. And I know now I think they've already rolled out the 8K photo mode where. Right. You, in the camera, you can scrub through and find a frame and have it pull a JPEG and throw it on the SD. You know, so what what does that do for you guys? Does it does yeah. it make your life better or does it does it worry you or where where do you fall on it? I gotta tell you, I'm I mean I'm a tech guy, so if it's getting better, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah. there's it's interesting. It's a little like as a as a graphic designer when Photoshop really took hold and and it became the most used program on the planet, mm -hmm. there were a lot of people, and to this day there are a fair number of people, that think if they have a copy of Photoshop that they're a graphic designer. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. that's obviously not true. And just right. because your cell phone has an 8K video camera that one day it will have, it doesn't make you a, a, a you know, it doesn't make you Steven Spielberg. <laughs> you know? So, right. um, so I, I think what it does do though, is it gives you some opportunity for creativity that, that we haven't always had. And I love that. So I'm about, I'm about that. I, I think, um, I mean, for myself, we've got a, uh, I've got a DJI Mavic drone that we use occasionally for some of these shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I wish they would let me take it out to the airfield more often, but we don't do that with it too often. That's, you know, potentially dangerous, but yeah, um, I could see that ending badly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and don't, don't misunderstand nothing without FAA approval. <laughs> so yeah, the, no, uh, of course, but, of course. But, but yeah, yeah. So we're all by the book, but, um, but like we've done some shots where um, uh, I was doing a, a website for uh, a church a while back and they had the beautiful old hundred year old building up on the hill here. And uh, we got some beautiful sunrise shots and we take the drone up and get some stuff. And then, you know, it's shooting 4K. And yes, if I was in the same spot and I shot that with my EOS camera or your Lumix or, or something like that, yeah, it's going to be a better quality image. But I got to tell you, we got some incredible stuff that you just couldn't get any other way unless you were sitting in a helicopter. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, the biggie right now is when you're enlarging that stuff. I mean, I don't know. You can kind of see this image behind me. That's an eight foot mm -hmm. wide image. If I was going to do something like that with it, it it's inappropriate. It's going to be grainy and it's not going to work as well. But for uh, I tell you, for your average stuff, you're doing a nice catalog or a magazine or a book, you know, or even some smaller prints. Uh, it works pretty well. So, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I, I like it. It's like it's like they say, right? The best camera is always the one you have on you. That's right. You know, it's the one so, you have with you. Well, yeah. So speaking of that, um, I want to talk about that book, you know, that, you, that yeah. you're working on. Is the book finished? Is it is it getting published soon? What's what's it so, about? Give me the give me the pitch on the book. Yeah. So so the book's been going for a long time. Um, it, it, this has been something I've been working on just for years in my spare time. One thing that this whole COVID-19 thing has done is really given me a, a little extra time to really crank on this thing. So the, the big challenge at the moment is, first off, it's called uh, we, On Wings Like Eagles. And um, it's, it's basically the history of military aviation. Um, so... We're starting with, uh, you know, go all the way back to Da Vinci Dreaming of Flight, a little brief synopsis there, and through the Wright brothers, and how very quickly the aircraft, even that the Wright brothers had, was militarized. And mm -hmm. then we go through, then you get into Roland Garros. Uh, Garros was a, uh, a, a pilot in World War One, and he was the first guy who decided, hey, I could put deflectors on the back of a propeller and shoot through it and not shoot myself down. So, that, you know, so that was one. And then we go into, you know, it evolves from there. Obviously, we get into stop with camels and some of those things. There are way more airplanes than I can possibly include in this volume. And that's hard for me uh, because I like all of them. But yeah, um, yeah. basically, we do some World War One stuff. Then we get into a really good block of warbirds with World War Two. To that point, the book is finished. Uh, then we get into um, 
then I get into the kind of the jet age. And so we pick that up with, uh, you know, Lockheed and Kelly Johnson and the F-80 shooting star and all those things. Then we move through that timeline and then into our modern jets. So the real question at this time, very honestly, and I'm hoping to be handing off the first part of the book to my editor in the next uh, maybe two, three weeks. And um, and then uh, and then I'm full on into the jets, which the jet portion is about halfway done. So we're getting yeah. close. Um, the big question at this time, I may do just because of the size of the thing, we may break it up into two volumes. And so you oh, may nice. have kind of may have the beginning through about World War Two and then the other or we may throw it all into one. And that's kind of the big decision at the moment. So but yeah, it's really cool. Along. And there's some pilot interviews. And thank you. Yeah, it's been a. Aviation people are wonderful. We've had fun meeting a lot of folks. And uh, anyway, it, it's been very neat for me to have that interaction and, and get up close and personal with the people in the planes. And so there's there's lots of those kinds of stories. John, I feel like I feel like as you describe that book, I feel like that book wants to be a website community destination oh, for, it, you know, that's what I, and I, there, it, I feel like there's a podcast in there with you hosting the whole nine you, yards. You. Well, you know, <laughs> at, at slickpixels.com, the book will definitely be there. And, uh, and there's parts of it. One of the things that I'm really looking at, like we said, there's, um, there's a lot of wonderful airplanes that I can't possibly include all at once, but the goal will be to add more over time. And yeah, so what, the, it'll come out definitely as, as print volumes and also as eBooks. Uh, one of the neat things with eBooks is you can add more material. So that's kind yeah, of fun. Too. Absolutely. But, but yeah, the, fun, no, I'm, I'm, the magic I'm of enjoying. digital. Yeah, yeah that's cool, man. Con yeah. Congratulations yeah, on that. Um, as we Thank as we you. wrap this up, I want to I want to put you on the spot here. So <laughs> what of all the shots that you've done over the years so far? What's your favorite shot? It's like picking one of your sons. Like, what's your favorite son? Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't do that to me, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really funny you ask. Uh, it's it's hard to have a favorite. Number one, I, you're a photographer. You know this. Um, yeah. One that has kind of become my signature shot is is one that we did coming back a few years ago. Um, I've done a lot of work with the guys. We're, we're part of the crew with Executive Suite. It's uh, the American Aeronautical Foundation out of Camarillo Airport, uh, B-25 Mitchell. That was a special thing for us because, ironically, we just kind of fell into that. The guys had me paint the nose art on the airplane, and we've all been the best of friends and part of the group ever since. My boys and girls grew up. Uh, Executive Suite was kind of their jungle gym growing up, which was oh. odd. So, so a lot of the great stuff that really – I don't know. I guess that's my favorite are, are some of those times with those guys. And what we got to do in 2011 for the for the celebration of the 100th anniversary of naval aviation, we did an air show up at Lemoore and uh, at the Naval Air Station up at Lemoore. And we did some air to air stuff with the uh, 100th anniversary Super Hornet. And a Corsair and a Bearcat. And then coming back, we did some beautiful stuff over it's uh, over California. In fact, you can see it. It's it's you can see a little bit of it in the background, but that's the San Andreas fault below that. And you've got a P-51 up top and a zero coming up behind him, which is kind of the opposite of what I would, you know, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's the only yeah. way to, yeah, I, I kept the Mustang primary in the photograph and, and figuring out later, well, that kind of means that he's in the bad spot, but, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. that's, that's probably a real standout image for me. There's, there's been some others definitely with, uh, jet fighters and some red flag stuff. There was a, there's an F-16 picture that we had this beautiful monsoonal moisture. I know you told me to pick one. I guess I'm picking two. But yeah, it's good. It's okay. <laughs> but, it's okay. But, you know, uh, it, it was about 110 degrees that day. Uh, big white puffy clouds were up over the Nellis Range. And uh, we had this flight of four, actually a flight of eight, but there's four in the shot. Uh, uh, F-16s from Hill Air Force Base came in. I was in the back of a KC-135 uh, air tanker. And so uh, anyway, they uh, they lined up outside there. You know, the whole thing is just like a big metal tube. And there's this little window about this big. And I'm shooting through it at these F-16s. And uh, that's, that was a pretty beautiful moment. You know, one of those that stands out. So that's fantastic. I guess, I, you know I what? That's. That, you know, that that's one of the one of the reasons uh, why I like doing these sorts of interviews, because I get to talk to people like yourself that, have, you know, the one thing, the connective tissue between all of us is photography and F-stops yeah. and shutter speeds and ISOs. Right. But yeah. every photographer is passionate about a particular genre of their art. In your case, it's, you know, illustration and planes and 
you know, you, you, you eat planes for breakfast, right? It's, it's <laughs> and another photographer yeah, yeah. is landscapes yeah. or birds or it's just, it's amazing. So congratulations yeah. on that. Stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. You know, it's, and, and I, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm always happy to talk F stops and all those kinds of things, but it's a lot more fun to talk about airplanes. So <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, where, where, so. where, where's the, uh, where did the, the runway lead for, for John Thou next? What, what's the next, your where next project the after the book? Lead? Yeah, yes. you know, it's it's so funny because the book project has, like I say, it's been about a 10-year project. Um, you know, I've really watched my boys grow up through this project, so that's been a fun thing. Um, you know, definitely the publishing side of this is is a big thing for, for me. Um, mm -hmm. We've got stuff in place for that. We intend to publish, I hope to be publishing uh, books of other uh, aviation photographers and authors as well. Um, we've done a lot to establish the infrastructure. Um, I am going to self-publish the book through our own publishing company, um, nice. and then we'll be putting it out that way. So we'll see how all that works out. Um, but unlike some of the, you know, there's there's different ways of doing that. Not that any of them are bad. I just chose to take a course through one of the uh, one of the printers that I've used for a lot of years in my graphic design business is going to be printing that, and then we've got some other uh, marketing channels and so on that we're using. So part of the goal here is to establish that publishing company and to get that stuff out there too. So not only for my own books, but to hopefully help others uh, live the dream. <laughs> you know, so that's it. that's part of I that. Photography it. will continue, illustration will continue, lots of lots of that kind of stuff. If people if people want to catch up to you and, and follow yep. you online and check out the photos or purchase a photo or two or sure. get the book, where, where should they go? Um, Slickpixels.com, I would say for anything aviation, that's a great place to start. Um, my graphic design business, which they're all intertwined, um, is jthow.com. So it's J-T-H-O-W.com. And that's also linked at Slick Pixels. That site, uh, actually, we're, uh, we've got some new stuff coming out with that that's really good. So either one of those is a good place. But anything aviation, slickpixels.com is the place to go. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody. If you've got questions or you can also find me on Instagram at, at slickpixels.official. Um, always in there with uh, usually a, a new photo or two just about every day. Uh, some kind of fun aviation things to look at. And that's a, that's a great community. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of fellow photographers in there that we've connected with as well. So yeah, Excellent. by all means, check it out, reach out to me. I'm always happy to say hi. So. All right, man. Well, thank you. Thanks Perfect. for taking the time today. You know, I feel like we only, we literally scratched the, the tip of the iceberg with, you know, this stuff, but I hope, yeah. I hope, that's a good thing because I hope I can have you on again to we can explore to. deeper into some technique and, you know, yeah. illustration. And there's there's so many things to talk about if you're if yes. you're up for it. Always up for it. Always happy to talk. You know, like I say, love this stuff. So it's it's a pleasure to speak with you about it. And I appreciate the opportunity. And, uh, you know, hey, maybe one of these times you get me out to a uh, rocket launch. We'll do a little live feed or something. We'll talk. Well, I need to get me out to one of those. I haven't been to one yet. <laughs> Maybe so maybe we'll go together. Out. Yeah, I'll get you out to a red flag or something. You know, we'll get out I'm, there. I'm down for that. So, yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Well, All it sounds right, like yeah, they like your credentials better than mine, I'm sure, with your history. I don't know. I don't know. I know your your credentials are probably better than mine. All you have to do is show them your website, and they're, you're in. So, so far, so good. So far, yeah. so good. Well, cool, man. Thanks. Well, you have, a, you have a good rest of the week, uh, rest of your day. Stay safe and sound down there, and I'll be in touch. Appreciate it. Talk to you real soon. Okay, take care, John. This is Twitter.